Hi friends, I am Dr. Pranav Pandya from Bandwith Analytical and today we are going to discuss about the superhero suit from a friend. Sounds like superhero name. Let's get started. So the supercritical fluid chromatography is a different type of chromatography which we are expecting from the routine uh, HPLC or UPLC. So basically the concept is that uh, we have to do the chromatography for the faster analysis purpose. So initially what happened that uh, scientists discovered the HPLC after that they gone for the lower particle size and they discovered about the UPLC phenomena. The problem with UPLC is about the high, it is working on a very high pressure. So the main reason for the high pressure is just the solvent density because indirectly we need a one more surface to get carry out any of our compound from our column. So that is required a solvent and uh, we have certain type of uh, solvents uh, but mostly we are using the reverse phase chromatography where we are using the water and acetonitrile and methanol. So these all solvents having a density around 1 to 0.5 so that density is increasing the pressure. So the, what is the situation that with a minimum uh, particle size we have to deal with a very high pressure. So uh, the secondary option that how we can reduce the density of the solvent. So uh, one simple phenomena is that if we can increase the temperature we can get a very less density but it is not a significant difference. So at the time uh, the concept of supercritical fluids are getting uh, very much familiar. So about supercritical fluid what is this that uh, at above the critical temperature and above the critical pressure if we maintain the both critical temperature and critical pressure together our matter will be converted in a supercritical region so what will be the benefit of the supercritical region that it is having a very less density and it is very getting a very high diffusivity level so if we talk about the chromatographic principle the basic phenomena for the chromatographic purpose is completely dependent on the diffusivity and the density of the solvent will uh, enable to work on a, a specific pressure limit. So again, uh, if we talk about the supercritical fluid, it is not a, also easy to get achieved in a very convenient way because we have to maintain the critical temperature and critical pressure together to achieve in a supercritical region. Now, each and every matter having that different uh, supercritical temperature and supercritical pressure. For the water, we have to reach up to 400 degrees Celsius for achieving that supercritical temperature. So that is not way more convenient and we know we are using for the analysis purpose. And again, if the compound having not stability on the 400 degrees Celsius, then it is worthless to doing. So we are blessed with the CO2. Yes, CO2 is as you know that it is uh, harmful for our earth and all that. But again, we can utilize the CO2 as our supercritical fluid because CO2 have a very good ability of maintaining that supercritical region within a 31 degree Celsius temperature and within 73 bar pressure. So that is way more convenient for uh, uh, achieving in our laboratories. So at that time, what is the best thing about the CO2? That if we go uh, the CO2 in its supercritical region, it is uh, getting a very less density and when you get a very high diffusivity. So the very good property about the CO2, it is non-flammable, it is non-reactive with a common organic intermediates and uh, pharmaceutical molecules. So uh, there is a, uh, lots of benefit that, that we can uh, also recycle the CO2 again and again. So we can use it as our mobile face. Uh, so that is the best part and the most important part that it is easily available and it is cheap because every time we are thinking about the technology and the analysis but we have to think about the cost of the analysis also because that will play a very significant role for your pharmaceutical analysis. If the technique is too much costlier then it is also not going to survive in the market. So uh, if we talk about the perks of uh, the SFC, uh, so SFC is a basically upgrade version of the HPLC or the UPLC. It has a very good ability that uh, it can utilize as a reverse phase as well as the normal phase because when the CO2 is going in a supercritical region, at that time it will react as a non-polar solvent. 
So uh, we can utilize the normal phase funda for the HPLC. Same thing we can utilize with a reverse phase column like C8 and C8. Uh, the specially designed uh, stationary phase are also there for the SFC. So uh, we can utilize on that also. And uh, if we talk about the runtime and the comparison, uh, typically HPLC having a runtime of 40 or 50 minute runtime. Uh, if we talk about UPLC, we can uh, reduce the runtime to 15 minutes. And if we talk about the SFC, the strangest thing is the runtime can be minimized up to one minute. So the HPLC, which takes 40 to 50 minutes of runtime for this, any single run analysis, SFC will take only one minute. So that is also a negative side of the SFC that uh, it is working on a very different phenomena that is not uh, too much versatile. Second thing that uh, if we talk about the sensitive analysis, then the reproducibility of the SFC is uh, not that much significant as uh, as compared with uh, HPLC and the UPLC. So there is a plus and minus are also there. The main application for the SFC is a chiral uh, submission. It is having a very different uh, approach about the chiral chromatography because the, most of the chiral columns are dependent on the normal phase section. The best thing about the SFC is uh, that we can uh, explore it on a preparative scale also. So we can do the purification also with using the CO2 and uh, the benefit of that is that we are uh, utilizing with a very minimum amount of solvent uh, for the purification purpose. So that is the purpose of SFC, there is a downside of SFC also but again if we talk about the overall performance then SFC is uh, one of the recent trend of the chromatography techniques. It is not so much versatile in the market right now, but sooner or later it will give its applications. So this is the end of this video and next videos I am going to cover about the instrumentation, general application, the preparative SFC and all the SFC parameters together. And for next we have the target of HPLC which is the most anticipated uh, topic in the analytical uh, section. So we are going to cover whole HPLC application the type of analysis and everything so please subscribe to the channel stay tuned with our channel by subscribing that so thank you so much for the watching if you have any query you can comment uh, down below or you can write on my email address the email address in the description be safe be healthy and stay tuned thank you